That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Okay, That's follow cool. me back to the start of the beginning. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. Yeah, that looked like a world of uh, uh, 1939. That's what it is. I saw that. Which, this one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's start back here. Oh, my God. These are mechanical sets. Yeah. Um, this is the Baird uh, Baird Televisor, which is the first John Logie's company made in 19, yeah. 1930. Yeah. Is that John Logie's? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to turn that on for you in a minute. No because, kidding. Yeah. Um, and it's a tin cabinet, and they, the, wheel. the wheels back there. Yeah. yeah. And then these are just all. This is an Italian set from 1930, which is really pretty. Yeah. Isn't pretty stylish. Yeah, is that yeah. stylish? Yeah, it looks like a lot, a lot newer than you. Uh, you guess well, that was fifties, right? Yeah, I love that. yeah. But Isn't it's that uh, beautiful. That was common. Uh, the German, um, you know, that uh, yeah, German modern look from the from from that time. Yeah. And this is actually a Nazi symbol. Is, that is it really? Yep, yep. Some guy wrote that, that. So that this was, of course, this is you know at that time. Mm -hmm. These are homemade sets, and these guys. This guy was. He came to see me a few years ago when he was. Uh, this, uh, when did he do this? 1928. Nope. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, what um, a collection. This is, um, this is the first set they made, and then they thought they were going to, um, uh, the father, his fa he was a senior in high school time, and his father thought he was going to make a ton of money with television, so they built this big one, and they rented a store in downtown Columbus, and they mm -hmm. put this in the window. And uh, every night they turn it on for people to to um, uh, see television. And of course, the picture you can see yeah, the right. picture is, and it also wasn't synchronized. Uh. So this wheel on the side was what kept it in synchronization. And Burry Jr., this this guy, his job every night was to sit in the window with a he had a mirror so he could see the front of it, and he would sit there and adjust the turn that wheel to keep the picture still for people. Yeah, it's it's a, what year was it? 1928. Yeah, right. Yeah. The Mercer Company, is that the name of it? The Mercer, uh, Mercer, yeah. What did they do? Well, it, after that they went into sound systems. They started, oh. you know, the, you know, the oh. back, you know, in the, sure. back then they, sat, they had these big sound trucks with yeah. the horns on the top of them and, and they ended up doing quite well in that, mm -hmm. in that business, going all over, uh, renting their trucks for the state fair and things you like that. You got this pr right from the people that From them, yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Here's the receiver. Um, which is quite a, doesn't have its tubes in it, but it's just a crude TRF receiver. The TRF. TRF. <laughs> this is a... Um, I'm still in love. Yeah. <laughs> this is, um, RCA made this. This is, they, they never sold it, but this is a phonograph cabinet that they modified to turn into a television receiver. And they used it, they used this in, in their early, in their tests around 1929. Elaine, um, that looked familiar to you? Yep. Your mother's phonograph? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it had the phonograph at the top, and there was, right. the speaker was here, right, and the receiver was right that's there. Right. there. But they took, in fact, we had a guy that visited the museum a we while back like. that uh, remembers um, he worked on the assembly line in Indiana where they made these cabinets. And he remembers the RCA television engineers coming in and grabbing 30 of them off the assembly line. Uh, let me ask you, Steve, were these refinished? This one was refinished. Some of these are not, like the Italian, these are all, everything else in here is original. Is that Yeah. Uh, some How of can them, they have kept it that I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, God. it's amazing. This one is sort of interesting. Um, this is a, this was made from a popular science article, a description, and it had all the dimensions for, yeah. for here's the, here's the, uh, here's the thing. And the interesting thing about this one is that, 
it used what they called a tri-standard disc. Uh, back then, uh, there were stations broadcasting with 24, 45, 48, yeah. and 60 lines. Yeah. And so you never knew, you know, you tune in one station, and, yeah. you, you, and so yeah. this this disc has three sets of spirals on it uh -huh. for 24. I think this is 24, 36, and 48 right. lines. And you would move the this viewing uh -huh. window, oh, and, it, and you'd have to move the neon lamp up or down too oh, behind it in order to, depending upon which station oh, you were right. watching. But that was pretty clever. Is that clever? Yeah. What year is it? About 1930. 30. Yeah. I think, well, actually, this is 28. I think was oh, yeah. because by by 1930 they pretty well standardized on two on 45 line triple interlays. And, I didn't uh, realize that they had done that. Thing. Yeah. And then 60 lines was the other was the other standard. Now that was made Chicago there. Yeah, this one right here. This is yeah. this is the Visionette, which is the the we guess about 500 of these were made. Oh. So this was a commercially made mm -hmm. uh, a commercially made set, and uh, they made this both in. Um, a factory assembled in kit form. You could buy all the parts and, and, and do it. What? Well, okay, there's a pin missing out of this, yeah. but, but when you turn it on, I saw it plugged in, uh, you'd have to spin this with a pin to get the motor started. Okay. And then this is the framing adjustment. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. And here's a receiver that was made for television in 1928, a homebrew. Boy, it looks like a nut with a pen. Uh, yeah. I remember that one. Well, at least I remember the upload again. Let me turn and see if this thing will cooperate. Um, is this the Logie Bard? Yeah. This is being fed by a PC yeah. uh, that, that does the conversion. Yeah, all right. Um, I see it. Yeah. Okay, now get down in and, yeah. and look in the back of the... Yeah, oh my gosh, right. Look at that. Now you talk about your, your, the bandwidth limitations you had. This was, these were broadcast on AM radio channels. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> so, so they were really I tell you, really I, uh, well, when it comes to uh, the work of John Logie Baird, I... I think that yeah, guy was yeah, absolutely yeah. amazing. He was amazing, wasn't he? Yeah, well, he did, the, you know, he did, Baird did the, you know, he did Color in 1928. Oh, Lord. Yeah, he did the, uh, you know, the Most Moscow people Vision. never heard of John Logan. Yeah. yeah. I had uh, people in our research group uh, work with him. Really? And, and they came from England, uh, all, uh, most of them did. Wow. They, they wow. actually worked with this guy, and they couldn't say nothing about it. Wow. Must have been an interesting character. Oh, he had to be. They said, I, I don't know if you know about his film. Did he? Yeah. Oh, he took uh, he took a television, he took a, a movie camera, put a color wheel in front of it, stick the projector, put a color wheel in front of it, and they <laughs> color, 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 movies. color movies before Technicolor even was thought of. And he I showed them in England, that. never came to the United States. I never knew. And that. they said it was absolutely, These guys said it, you just wouldn't believe it. Wow. He did some rather interesting right. stuff. We have a camera, a mechanical camera in here, yeah. too. Uh, how how the, many lines is this? This is 30 lines. Sir, vertical oh, vertical scanning. Oh, yeah. only 30. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> Let's see if this thing will cooperate. Just for the heck of it. 30 line picture. Yeah. Oh, what is this? Okay, now this is. This is a lens disc set. One can used to be high def. <laughs> this is 45 line triple interlays. Um, How do you keep these things working? Well, that is a major issue. Now, that, why is this not sinking? Mm -hmm. Too much today. Apparently today may be one of the days he didn't keep it working. Well, <laughs> the problem is that this is synchronous motors, so it ought to be yeah. sinking, uh, but it's not for some reason. You need a UPS on it. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you can see the picture wandering through it. But this is a this is a lens, uh, this is a disc with lenses, emb lenses embedded in it, yeah. and there's a point light source, yeah. uh, neon source. That pre right. but, so this was 1933, this was the you know, so you got a six by six inch screen, and right. if you stood, you could see the viewing angle. It's about yeah. ten degrees yeah. off the center. Yeah. So that, that, it was, that's not a bad screen for that time. I know, but it was not. It was really. Okay. There were about thirty stations broadcasting, broadcasting by uh, 1930. On AM. 
AM, AM, and then in 1930 they moved to two megahertz. Yeah. The FCC yeah. allocated a band, yeah. 100 because they needed they yeah. they went to 100 kilohertz bandwidth yeah. per right. channel. Yeah, getting the high definition, you know, the 60 line <laughs> picture needed. Right. This is um, um, after the the um, mechanical TV died in 1933 because yeah. you know you couldn't do anything with it. it was, right. Yeah. The picture was so horrible, and so you, I'm sure you know this, but the you know the BBC started broadcasting in 1936 yeah. with a 405 line, uh, and all these sets in this room and that one in there are are. Um, our 405 line sets. Yeah. Um, there are about 200 surviving British sets mm -hmm. uh, from them before the war. There are only about 20,000 made, and about 200. Wow. And you can see, from the cheapest one was expensive. You know, you got a car, If you went to a set that that had a speaker in it, I don't even know they made them that big. Uh, I'm surprised. Well, they're bigger than that. I'll show you some large, even larger ones. Um, here's a 15 inch. That's unbelievable. Look how look how long the CRT is. Oh yeah, it's all the way. But here's one. Here's a little five inch that's working. Yeah. Um, there's an issue because this is this is um, um, 24 frames, and in England. The power for you know for instance is 50 hertz, so you yeah. didn't see this oh, band yeah. going through, and then then didn't bother to filter the yeah, right. the, the high voltage of the picture. Too. Right. But here we're running it on 60 cycles, and we've got that flicker. Sure. Uh, but all different kinds. This is the cheapest one. You had to hook a radio up to this for the sound because uh, they they made it without speakers. Obviously, no uh, channel tuning knobs because it was only one channel. You didn't need to. Um, what was the cost of the today's dollar? Well, the, the, um, a, a medium price set like this was the equivalent of the cost of a car. Okay. So that gives you, that's yeah. a good reference. Um, so they're very, very high priced. And some of these fancy sets like this one behind you that has the phonograph in the top was just, you know, really. These were 19 what? 30. 1939. 30, oh, 30, oh, 36. 36. This, is, this is the oldest oh, okay. one. Yeah, this is the 36. I thought, I thought so. we were in the 31. Or right. 36. So yeah. these were the very. Yeah, uh, I, I, I can believe the that. The programming was all done. I have a hard time believing that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a third 1938 39 model. Um, I can't believe they made a tube that big. Yeah. Oh, we'll show you the tubes. So we have some of the tubes in the back. Yeah. Here's a. Here is a. Here's a one running. Yeah, and the mirror and lid design. Yeah, they, I remember. They, they, the tube is about this long, so they made yeah. the set so you watched it through yeah. a mirror rather than. Yeah, that, that one was thirty-nine. These are all thirty-nine. Yeah, yeah. I know that was the World Fair, isn't no, it? No, no, it looks like it. We'll show you. These are all. These are all British. These are the sets that were introduced at the World's Fair in '39. I, I didn't see them. There's the smallest one. I thought I saw that. Well, this is the one that gets the most publicity. Yeah. Yeah, made the most of. But they had this whole product line. RCA. RCA. And here's this first one. This was the cheapest one. And again, you needed a radio for the uh, yeah. for the sound. That's the same set for the speaker and amplifier. Right. This is the nine inch. Uh, nine inch set. That's pretty good. Right? And yeah. Yeah. Um, that's an original what picture. Were they broadcasting at this they were in. in uh, they were trying. They, you know, they were doing an awful lot. Um, NBC, NBC was doing a lot of remote telecasting. They did football, boxing, uh, horse races, uh, baseball. How many of these they sell? Um, they made seventeen hundred of these. Okay. They made a few hundred of these. Yeah. Um, so the, there weren't the, that many the, the guess is that there were seven thousand sets in the U.S. before uh, the war started, but nobody knows. You know, for a, it had to be uh, about the only place they received it was on the East Coast. Uh, East Coast, Chicago had a station. L.A. had a station. Yeah. Had a really sort of progressive station that was broadcasting okay. since the mid '30s. Um, and this quality. Yeah. Yeah, this is the original. Everything's original. That's the original picture tube. Right. The only thing that's not original is the signal source. So this yeah. is probably better, yeah, substantially yeah. better than it was but back then. Less, but yeah, but it was still pretty darn that's, good. That's amazing. And here's the 12 inch set. Uh, now this is not an original picture tube. This is a uh, yeah. a, a rebuilt tube. Okay. But uh, yeah. I and remember. then here here's some. Andrea's. Andrea was another company. They're still in business. They don't make um, television anymore, but they make um, avionics. 
Uh, it's common to have a magnifying lens to make the screen yeah, look yeah. <laughs> um, look bigger. Yeah. Here's the CRT. I yeah. I, don't yeah, know, I remember, remember that. The other yeah, monster. I remember that. Yeah. I was, you know, just when you were talking 39, I was 14 years old. So you remember a good bit of... I, I remember going to the World Fair. And you remember, did you remember the RCA exhibit? Yeah. Were you, did you get televised? No, I didn't. I, did, I, I just watched it. Though. Just watched it. But yeah. it was because uh, you know they had a pavilion there where you could go up and. and yeah, I know. Uh, and Dave has, in fact, he has with him some of the. They gave cards to people. Yeah. That said I was televised I, I, at, the, I, I, at the 39. I, I was fascinated. Well, at 14, uh, uh, you know, the world before uh, the 39 World's Fair was sort of uh, yellow. <laughs> it <wasn't> sort of yellow. <laughs> it wasn't very bright. Yeah, that's. Uh, and you went into the World's Fair, and this color was just blue on you, wow. and uh, and it, it just mesmerized. It was, wow. it was something totally new, and you were seeing things like like the, this, yeah. like that. And I don't think I even even knew about television until then. Did you I, see the? I um, saw uh, what's her name? It was a cat. That's right. Felix? Felix, Felix the cat. Did you see the um, the Lucite sat there? They built a they built a you know the TRK twelve in a yeah. Lucite cabinet to, to um, No, I don't remember. I, I probably did, but I don't remember very much. Uh, so. but I, uh, there were a couple of exhi exhibits there that were intriguing. One was the uh, the RCA, the, the the GE exhibit was fascinating. Westinghouse with his talking robot. <laughs> right. Yeah. Did they have a theremin there? Yeah. That must have been. That well. must have been. Yeah, it was. That fascinating. Was fascinating. That was fascinating. Yeah. And and of course they buried that uh, big capsule. Right. And uh, I, 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 I I met with the guy who designed that titanium thing that went down. Oh really? It's supposed to last. I don't know. Five thousand years. So it was, it was all very fascinating. <laughs> Wow. Uh, but later on, to, to be involved with oh, the people that, that had it, so it was a turning point, I think, in, right. in, in the way we saw the world. I, I, I would imagine. Yeah. Right. Um, this, I'm sure, will interest you. Um, this is the ah. actually the second generation yeah. RCA camera, yeah. uh, mobile camera. Uh, yeah. The first generation was in 1937, yeah. and it required two full-size buses full of equipment yeah. to support it. And this was a this was a breakthrough. Um, because it, it originally had five cabinets, five big and five small cabinets, but you could carry the whole thing in a big, you know, in a big uh, right. in a big car. But this is a this is the four-inch uh, iconoscope uh, huh. camera. This is um, there's only there's one other well maybe two other cameras that survive that are that are from that. Uh, from that, from that era. There's a GE camera and then there's two RCAs that we... Yeah, you know, I, uh, Westinghouse owns a station that certainly was famous for radio, right? KDKA. Yep. And I, I can't believe they weren't involved. They were. They were broadcasting mechanical television. Yeah. Um, but by that time, the development of television had moved to um, uh, RCA and to um, yeah. you know by by the thirties it moved to tell it moved to to RCA and, oh, and GE RCA, RCA. Uh, RCA without a doubt became the right. the, the champion of, of right. certainly the leader in that right let's go in here and get get to some military television yeah probably have seen this this is yeah. the, this is the first um, <laughs> first military use of, uh, yeah. of television um, and we had a guy here a couple of years ago that had that has every imaginable piece of, of equipment this was used in a, in a wooden glider yeah. that uh, they carried up under b-17s yeah. around 1942 yeah. and then later was used in mm -hmm. in the b-17s themselves yeah. they used yeah. the planes that were mm -hmm. uh, reached the end of their very useful yeah. flying time. It didn't work very well. No, <laughs> not from what I heard. No, no. In fact, the, well, the B-17, you know, the way they, that worked was they um, they had volunteer pilots. They take a B-17 and cram it full of explosives, and then yeah. have a trip wire to arm the explosives. Yeah. And the guys would take off, get to the coast of England, bail out, 
uh, and then use television to fly it across the channel and crash the plane into a yeah. German target. But uh, in the yeah. early days, at uh, least, uh, whatever uh, you pull uh, the big V two, yeah, <laughs> right. But you pull in the early days when you pull the wire to trip to, to arm the explosives. About ten percent of the time, the plane would blow up. That's tremendous. And kill the pilots. It's not so like, it's like, like killed like that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Joe Ken uh, Kennedy was killed. Yeah, uh, it's like sitting on a limb and sawing yourself off. Yeah, correct. That's awful. Right. And these are just more. Here's a, a Dumont. Alan Dumont, of course, was a big yeah, name. In Alan, and we've taken this one out of the cabinet just so people can see what a yeah. monstrosity. Uh, yeah. Look at that chassis. Look how thick it is. And how heavy it is. It's uh, yeah, yeah. this set um, is um, electrostatic deflection, yeah. mm -hmm. and the sweep tubes operate at 1,500 volts in this wow. thing. That's how much it how needs in order to deflect it. What are these tubes on? Uh, these were this this one is Five, eight thousand volts. Eight? Yeah, but it's not. But it's four thousand. They ran the cathode at minus four thousand, and the anode at plus four thousand. So the total okay. oh, potential okay. difference yeah. was eight. Uh, yeah, uh, was eight thousand. You got a chain in here. Well, the chain is goes down to the channel selector. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, these things were just uh, just uh, uh, monstrosities. What's a year in this? Though? 39. 39. All the American sets are 39 and 40, essentially, the pre-war. He did some amazing work, too. Well, you know, all his sets were just just over-engineered. Oh, yeah. And um, oh, he, I don't think he ever made any money in anything. No, he didn't. Uh, he did sell sets. Though. He sold sets, um, especially during the war. And, the, you know, and then he had that network, of course, after yeah. the... Uh, in fact, I thought that was, was going to be the... The big thing was, was Dumont. It's Dumont's network. network. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how some people... Put a gun on that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, isn't that something? <laughs> this tube is, 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 is a copy of a Cosser tube uh, that we have in, in the 1936 They did set. some amazing work, and then according yeah. to this it's a bunch from research, they were ahead of the U.S. on CRT design. They had, um, they had ion traps, um, and they had... Um, yeah. Uh, and... They, they they were the first to develop tubes that weren't that were relatively short and had wide deflection angles. Yeah, the of course, the, the Germans were the ones that were really had. They had a rectangular tube in 1939. According to uh, at least from what I understood is that uh, Westinghouse went in big. Well, they always were big in television, but not not this type of thing. Mm -hmm. But they brought this bunch lock, lock and barrel from England. <laughs> Who had the experience? Really, they just didn't have it here. Yeah, and they worked for Logie Baird and the whole bunch. Hmm. And they came out of that world, and that was a good world to come out. Of. Yeah, and of course they had Swark in there who developed right. the tubes. Right. So they had that history, right. and they, they carried it on, and it was primarily the English that carried it on. Hmm. I'll be darned. And they're the ones that, that developed. When I went to them for the uh, color converter, said that. Uh, well, we, we, we thought that if you ever went anywhere, you're going to go sequential. It's the only way to go. So we developed the ground thing, and here's our, circuit, here's our layout of exactly how it's to be done. And I said, have you ever tried it? He said, well, we sort of tried pieces of it to make sure it works. It works for that part of it. Right. So I said, well, can you put it in a format that will allow NASA to go buy the parts or get the thing? Right. And he said, yeah, but they did. we can and we will. But the only thing they don't have is the uh, uh, magnetic recorders, which we have. Right. And they were doing development work on that for commercials. They were going to put it on the magnetic recorder. So they had all these magnetic recorders. Right. He said, we'll bring the magnetic recorders. They went out there, and within a week, they had that thing up and running, right. and, and they were magnificent. Wow. Without them, you know, I couldn't have couldn't done it. There was nothing I could do. Wow. So I, they were they were a big help. Wow. I was going to write John Logie Baird a letter, but he wasn't around. <laughs> he wasn't around. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go and look at the uh, post-war stuff. Wow, look at this. Wee. Oh my god. These are early post-war yeah. um, 
sets from um, you know the the, yeah. this, the 621 oh. was the first, and these oh, hand big monsters. Yeah, um, I remember him. Wow. Just all kinds of, yeah. of different. At that, uh, and they came blossoming like. Uh, they did, like, but like flies. That's exactly right. And manufacturers just came out of the woodwork. Just, Everybody thought they were going to make big money on television. Everybody and his brother. Yeah, right. And we can get it for you wholesale. We can get it for you wholesale, right? Right. And it was absolutely an amazing period. It, it was, yeah. A transition. Right. Well, I guess in. Yeah, because they went from nobody having TV in 47 to half the country having it by 53. Just, just blew the place up. Right. We had a TV before we had a phone. Yeah, you, as you mentioned that, right? I remember, you were popular in your neighborhood all day. I guess the first time I saw something after the war, my dad worked in the uh, department store and uh, uh, as a salesman, and he said, why don't you go up and take a look at the television room? It was a darkened room. Right. They had four or five sets, and the Brooklyn Dodgers were playing baseball. And I was watching Jackie Robinson. I said, "Good Lord, this is amazing!" It was, amazing, isn't it? It was and it was, it was so well, it was so polished. It just blew my mind. Really? Huh. I mean, the whole presentation of it. Right. They had done some things to show the guy on first running, and then they split screened somebody. They, they wow. were so far advanced at that point. Yeah, it's amazing and how quickly. And, and, and the idea, you know, to me it was, how did they do this all of it? You know, like it happened just yesterday, and all of a sudden there it was. Because yeah. you know, the, the average person never saw it. Though. There were some amazingly creative people, I think. Absolutely. Without doubt. Well, let's hear some. I want to get you to the color because that's. I think you would really be interested. And you mentioned the. Um, these sets are, are, are projection sets from yeah. the late 40s, and yeah. you know, as you remember, they uh, most people watch their first television in a, ba a bar. Or, yeah, you know, and they, I remember these. Yeah. yeah, I didn't like them. But I didn't yeah. Oh, they're damn, they're awful pictures. Yeah. This one is sort of cool. Let's walk down here and look at this. Um, here's uh, Dumont was. Um, This is the largest wow. black and white set ever. I never saw that. This is from 1951. Who the hell made that? Yeah, Alan Dumont. He's <laughs> a biggie, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, but, uh, <laughs> let's go for it. Look at that. But, uh, the DVD has stopped running, I guess. How the hell would you replace that tube today? Well, that's we've got. That's an issue. We have. There's a company in France that's now rebuilding the pre-war okay. Pyrex that's tubes, right. and. They're, they're capable of doing this tube. In fact, right now, John Folsom, one of the collectors here, is trying to figure out how to get his tube shipped over there at a reasonable cost. What the hell they cost? It'll cost about a thousand bucks to rebuild a tube. That's it? Yeah. But that's not bad. in a set like this, you know, they're, they're you <laughs> that's, know, it's, that's, and the pre war sets are oh worth my God. tens of, you know, over $10,000 in many cases. Uh, so paying a thousand dollars for a new tube. Amazing. Where'd you get that one from? That was from a collector in Chicago. Um, the guy who came to our convention faithfully every year, and unfortunately, uh, last year he died of cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, but he he was he was downsizing, moving to a smaller house, and that's the big problem in being a TV collector is these things are so big and uh, and bulky that unless you have a huge house, you you can't have stuff like this. Was that and from Dave? That was from Dave. Yeah. And how he kept that thing. Yeah. Beautiful cabinet. Wow. Now that was an expensive set. You know, that, that was a, I think around twenty five hundred dollars. And in nineteen fifty one, that would have been uh, somebody's left arm. Well, that's right. Well, you buy a brand new Chevy for sixteen hundred dollars. Then you know. I can't imagine what the value of that thing is today. Well, you got to find um, a buyer first. You? <laughs> yeah. Jim Menning says he has. He used to be in. The, he'd gotten it from the lobby of a hotel in Lake Geneva. It right. was in the lobby of a hotel. Mm. Is that right? Yeah. So that would be a commonplace for something. Don't you have like another that. one of those in your garage out there? There's one that, that Bob Dobush is trying to sell. Uh, and I don't think it has a broken tube in it, so I, I don't think it was sold. It's quality amazing. It is, it is amazing. Well, Dumont sets were always known for their, yeah, you know, for their quality. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and this is also this is a 90 degree deflection tube, yeah. which was state of the past state of the art at the time. It was just uh, most tubes were 50 and 70. Yeah, they make the tube. I think that Seabird said the bars were good. The, oh, yeah. Seabird. Well, they made a jukebox. I know Seabird very well. I know him first. Right over there is a Seabird. Oh, is it Seabird? It's a Seabird jukebox. It looks like a jukebox. Video yeah. jukebox. Video right jukebox. 
Yeah, you let's go back. Let's go back. I, 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 this yeah, is but here it's a it's a yeah. and it's got a but it's got a 15 inch television set. Yeah. And there's a switch inside, so you can set it that for a quarter you can play five songs, yeah. or you could watch television for 25 minutes. So it was the first pay television. Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't have videos. Uh, no, no, no. It was what was ever, whatever was being uh, broadcast. broadcast is what you watch. Seabury did some work for me one time. Really? And uh, they, they had some, they had some rather good capabilities in militaries. Oh, really? I didn't know. And that. so when I went in there the first time, and what we were doing was highly classified. When I went there, and there was this room that said classified. And I, I started walk to He said, no, you can't go in there. I said, why not? He said, well, that's where our jukeboxes are. We don't show that. These are, these are classified. <laughs> so he took me in this open room. <laughs> I said, man. Afraid of, afraid of, you were going to compete against him? Yeah. <laughs> he knew what classified meant. This so, was classified. So he was afraid there was going to be a Westinghouse jukebox? Or? No, he, 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 anything that had to do with the next year jukebox, that was covered up. They didn't want anybody else to know. Wow. Them. So they were a great little company. They, had, they were all, uh, what were they again? Uh, they were Swedish. Oh. And uh, they had a Swedish club that we right. used to go to. It's a great bunch. Well, let's head into the color area. Yeah, I like to see that. Um, there are. Um, yeah. What a collection of stages. You gotta be proud. Which one for the Yeah. Well, here is a um, CBS Field Sequential yeah. set. Let me put it on, um, let me advance the DVD, because this is Wizard of Oz, and the first yeah. part of it's uh, in black and white. Yeah. But, This is actually a, a studio model. This came from uh, uh, at the Atlanta CBS affiliate. They, um, uh, it, we, we, we found it. We found it on eBay actually with a bunch of old motion picture projection equipment, uh, and it was missing all kinds of things. And slowly we got it got it put back together. And you can hear it. it probably wasn't that noisy originally, <laughs> but but um, you know it's the the uh, and this is a. Um, this one was working until our wheel flew apart. Yeah. And Cliff is trying to make a new wheel for it. Right. This, is, this is a converter yeah. that CBS sold. Oh, that I we turned a black that. and white set into. A, How about that? And it had a little box that would change the sweep rate. Uh, and then this thing flew, went in front of it and turned it into a. I don't, a new I don't remember them ever selling that. Uh, I don't think they did. Uh, they're only about. They're only a handful of surviving sets, so I yeah. can't believe they sold. Them. They preferred you to put it onto a CBS set rather than an RCA. What right. are you, <laughs> what, yeah. are you, what? what they demonstrated on RCA sets. I don't think they made sets in in, in, in 1950. By the time CBS got into production, of TV sets it was too late. It was too late, right? When uh, when the, the Goldmark showed me the original, it was I don't think it was any bigger than seven inches. The 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 one the one set that I don't think it has any. Well, this is a ten inch tube. Yeah, I realize. Uh, and this is a uh, this is all a ten inch tube too. But um, one of John Folsom has a seven inch set that's a CBS label that yeah. I think they they may have sold a couple of. You know, uh, we don't that know. That was sure. all they had. Right. But when I went there, I thought I was going to see more, but all they had was this little seven one seven inch set, which was quite good, and it, and it was, and. It, that's got a magnifier. In front. That's the magnifier, yeah, right. Yeah, I, when you look at it without the magnifier, it was sharp as I thought. Yeah. The magnifier sort of. Well, I think they figured they had to have a bigger. I know. A bigger screen. But if you look at the just directly right. the CRT. Yeah, it was much. It was a brilliant sharp. Right. Right. But nevertheless. It was pretty good at going in. Yeah, that's pretty good color, and you can see why the uh, FCC would have picked it over the, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. the crummy RCA system at the, uh, absolutely. At the time. Uh, and the color, there's no convergence problems, there's no no hue control, there's, you know, everything is, you well, know, comes out right. One of the things that Sarnoff did when he showed this, is Sarnoff said, well, here's the 
projection of what CRTs are going to go. Right. And he, they were projecting 24 inches. And he brought in the set with a 48 inch. Wheel. wheel, yeah, to, to show how impractical it was. Yeah, it was yeah. You need the half horsepower motor to turn it. Yeah, yeah and, right. and that sort of made the guys. Right. The wheel away. Yeah, because right. the people in FCC really were in favor of this thing. Or I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether Goldmark was being used by the FCC to spur uh, uh, Sonoff on to develop, you know, finish the development of the two. Or if they really meant really to do it. Huh. I, I, I just don't believe they meant to do it. That's an interesting that's too idea. too far out. Right. And so right. when you talk about, well, we're going to have to do away with uh, all the sets of right. the converter. It does sound a little far-fetched, doesn't yeah, it? That, and everybody's going to go to color. Right. And, uh, and this is not compatible. And what do you do as the thing gets well, bigger? Well, the other problem is the, the um, resolution. Uh, there's actually the resolution of this system is limited to about 240 yeah, lines. That's right. So if you get anything bigger than a 12-inch uh, screen, right. it, it's really fuzzy. So I think that FCC did that, giving him a, a, a license to, to nice. transmit. Yeah. It was purely to, to put a bug on Sonoff. That's a, real hard. That's a fascinating idea. I've never I've never heard that, but it's, it's because it didn't take so. him long afterwards to come up with his shadow mask. Right. Right. <laughs> it was. It was. I don't think it was seven or eight months later. later. He had right. it. Well, we've got. I'll show you some of the tubes we have. Here's a CT100, which is the yeah the first. Yeah. Um, actually, not the first. The Westing Westinghouse beat right. by two months. Right. Which must have really annoyed Sarnoff. No, uh, no, they they had a deal with Sarnoff. Oh, did they? Yeah, Westinghouse had this set waiting for the two, and right. Sarnoff was just trying to build the two. Right. He wasn't concentrating on the set. So Westinghouse said, "Well, we'll have the set ready for you whenever you're ready." And the first set that came out was hope you don't. I know that. Uh, and uh, they just dumped them right in that set and got them out there. Wow. So uh, it relieved RCA of that problem at that point in time. And, and they were, these were shown, uh, they were put in uh, major places where people could go see. Mm -hmm. you know, in the, in the newspaper right. buildings and whatever. But it was not bad at the time. Well, I mean, that's awfully good color. Yeah, yeah. I, what what I year is this? 54? 54. Yeah. And it went, I mean, the color went downhill after this for that's several right. years. That's right. Isn't that so? And that, right. that's what the bug the movie the color. But, but the part, of course, of part of the problem is the size, size of the screen. Of quality. Yeah. Uh, the size of the quality. Yeah, the size, the, yeah, that's right. The size of the screen hides a lot of flaws, you know, if you really can see it close. I tell you what, I, the interesting thing was, um, when I first saw it, and, and it was a really the first color I'd ever saw on television, you know. And I was working at Westinghouse at the time they these things came out. And uh, I just it just blew me out. Yeah. Uh, a few years later I went to I was in the uh, New York in in the uh, at, at NBC and they were, they were having a program we went down there to, to look at what they were doing. And uh, they were, they were, do, they were in, internally. They were going eight megahertz, and I looked at their monitor and said, "Wow, right? I mean, this is a, this, <laughs> this has nothing compared to what anybody has well, seen." Well, yeah. So they they were really going high on it, and, but they couldn't get it out. Of, uh, they, whatever they transmitted, right? Was great at the moment. Right. But, you know, That's not bad. Out? No, right. he 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 knocked them dead with this thing. Right. You got to give Sean off credit. At that time, that was one hell of a development. It certainly was. Oh, one of the God. cleverest oh. things done in electronics. It was a tough that. job for him. He right. kind of. It took him 10 years to make money. Yeah, oh, yeah. it took him a long right. time to make right. money on it. Is thing. this the original picture tube? Uh, nobody knows. I mean, it is a original tube from that era, yeah. but we don't know if the tube's been changed in the Chances, I would say, are not. Yeah, probably not. If, if, that, that, if that case was used. Yeah. I'll guarantee you that they go gassy. They want gassy. Right? 
Well, the, they, 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 they leak they is leak the problem. Yeah. Yeah. They leak air, and we're, we, we have a project going to rebuild them yeah. because there are, there are about 130 of these that survive, right, right. but only 20 work because right. they can't find the picture tubes. That's well. right. So, uh, oh, you got it. That, that's, that's a sweetheart. Let's, let's move down and see some others. You talk uh, about a transition. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, here, you may, here's a, um, here's a uh, 1949 RCA um, single gun shadow mask developmental tube. So this is when they were trying to, to uh, first trying to develop. And then we have a three gun. Uh, Tube yeah. too, that eventually evolved into the tube that's used in the in the um, the awesome. yeah these are all the the a little bit of work, work. yeah but it it, it did it sort of worked oh, yeah. yeah absolutely um, it did but if you can imagine you have a single gun being shared by three three different colors the brightness was was a was a serious issue they never could get how they actually do that they formulate the mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. that's what they did, and they and it um, and also you know uh, registration was a real problem. Getting it to go to the spots properly was a, was a real issue. I think this was what they used for the converter. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's not just a standard sort of a yeah. Viticon and too. And looking at it a little small. Right. A little, a little monitor, 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 monitor screen. Yeah. Right. Here's some more interesting color stuff. By the way, we built a. We built a, 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 a Viticon about that big. Really? And uh, we built a little camera about that. It was for CIA. For the CIA? <laughs> really? And it was only about this big. Right. And it was about one inch square. Wow. And somebody came to me uh, uh, from NASA and said, we're going to have this, uh, we're going to have this big parabola. They're going to blow it up. And, and they want to know whether it's going to change safe while it's up in space. You have a camera and pull right. out this little thing. And the guy said, Can we really? So he's got, he, I have a picture of He's got this little thing and he's looking at this parabola and he's got a lens like this. <laughs> a big old lens big, well, with the camera. Is that what that big? It. <laughs> well, it's a little tiny little, 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 little thing. That we did a lot for uh, intelligence. Hmm. Yeah. I love this one. Those are the the old the old iconoscopes, yeah. yeah. Right. And here's some image dissectors. Yeah, well, I remember. Yeah. That. Unbelievable. That brings back memory. Right. Here's some uh, convert some uh, oh. converters to convert NTSC to uh, uh, to color. Um, a little sync problem. This one, this is a this is a color tell that you could actually buy. That was a manufactured item, and you bought that and put it on your TV. This is a kit, or not a kit, really. The, just, you could buy the basic parts of it from a company. What, but, what was this? I don't understand. Well, it's they take NTSC and they just sequentially turn it into field sequential. So they pull off red, green, and blue, and they have a switch that routes the proper color to the CRT. And so this is this is one twenty, you know, oh. one twentieth of a second for oh. each for each okay. complete. And the flicker is. I didn't even know they made that thing. Yep. About 57, 58. 57, 50, right? 50, yeah, or somewhere in that time. It's in radio electronics. Yeah. Is that what it was? You yeah. could build your own. Well, this was actually, this was the kit. Was I mean, this is the one you could build your own. Couldn't have been many of these made. No, no. and this one they sold. And I don't know, I would guess a few thousand of them were, were sold. Yeah. To hobbyists. Yeah, it was out of my focus. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, just, and you can see it's pretty horrible. So, but by that so time, why, why the flicker? Or, oh, well, because you, because well, the oh, field rate becomes 1 20th of a second rather than, you know, 1 60th, because you have to have one for each color. And so, if you have, for instance, a basketball game, you would see a red, green, blue basketball, you know, well, one after the other. Well, we looked at sequential on a monitor, and we're seeing the same thing. Yeah. And, that, and same it, thing, it used right. to flicker, the, the picture I showed of the battery. It was too late. Nobody had 10-inch TVs anymore by the time you started selling this. That's right. Everybody had 21-inch TVs. That's yeah. right. right. And it was a real pain to modify the sets, because the sets weren't designed for the, the IF bandwidth, you know, to deal with color and so forth. Yeah. And so forth. Yeah. To have been working. Now here's this is sort of some interesting. Um, here, um, Cliff Benham has done some. She was art director. I think Cliff. Let's let Cliff. Um, let's let Cliff um, explain him because he's he's the guy who did it. Well, this is 
This is a, how are you? Yeah, I could This is a CBS color set. That's it. But I'm using a PC monitor. Right. Because I, I, I knew I'd never find an original. This so is, I this built this all myself, built my own wheel. This is the good And I put uh, a waveform monitor back there, right. which is what CBS had to adjust the video level. Yeah. You can, you can yeah. see the change, and yeah. you can see you've got RGB you sequential. Fantastic job. Thank you. Unbelievable. This is a two-color set. This is using very close to red and cyan. And so you can see that the colors are there, but they're certainly different. Yeah. Yeah. Is yours too? Yeah, all of this is mine. And this set is the, uh, about what, 57 years late, if CBS had been able to get a color CRT from RCA, right. this is what it would have looked like. This is a field sequential picture yeah. on a color CRT. Yeah, would have worked. Okay. Yeah, this is the CBS converter made by Daryl Hawk. And I take the sequential signal and I run it into a couple of logic chips. So, uh, okay. triple one of two, switch yeah. and it selects red and feeds it to the red gun to green and then the blue okay. and you're seeing a sequential color signal but uh, it looks pretty it, it looks yeah. always pretty good the flicker that we have is because of the uh, opaqueness between each filter Okay. Yeah, that's the the between the, the dividing line between the different filters? Yeah. Okay. And you don't have that. Well, I... You don't have it here. No. I mean, you no. It. Well, this is an electronic conversion from I ETSC. That. Yeah, to, I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. All I'm saying is, is that when we look at it, we are looking at flicker not because of filter, because of the opaque. As it would go through, oh, I see what you're doing. Because you, you had a field sequential camera, right. then you were delaying it and we were making a simultaneous NTSC picture. Okay. We were just making, we were looking at sequential. We never converted it. We didn't, but NASA did. Yeah. But when we looked at it, and I wanted to see what I had, I had to live with flicker only because well, we, we just went in the red, green, and blue in C plus. Yes. Your eye just integrated it. Right. But because of the opaqueness between each color as it came by, it would cause us to flicker. If I didn't have that, if I could have found a way around it, I could have yeah. done what you did here. I would have been a seven heaven. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to say how. How oh, wonderful uh, what you did. Well, the key to this I lived with that for, for a lot of years. The key years. is this little converter here. Because it's, it's I don't even want to hear that. The, yeah, if you'd had that back, you know, in the yeah. 60s, how... I can hear, I can, well, I can hear Omar say, if I only had it, they had it right. back in the 50s. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you live with what you what you got at the time. I suppose the, the thing I should do is try to get a DVD of the... Apollo missions and play that on one of these so I can see I what it would look like. That's a good yeah. idea. And feel sequential. Yeah, Let me ask you, well, it's, it's all, the only thing you've got is a converted, but uh, I can probably get you a sequential tape. Ooh. What would what what <laughs> format would the tape be? Uh, uh, NTSC. But I mean, like a one-inch Ampex or a half-inch VHS. I'll give you, I'll get you a DVD. My goodness, <laughs> that would be tremendous. Can you, can you do something with it? Yeah. Would you send me a copy? Absolutely. You're on. So, <laughs> I'll get you something. Well, I'll see what I can that get for you. Well, I'll make sure you get my name and address, do that for me. email address, do and all that, that sort of thing. I, I, I want to see what this that looks like. Yes. I'd like to see what you can do with it. Okay. Well, she can. I have a. I have reason to want to do that. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I will. Because the people who are, they're still using the old converter. Oh, it's enough. I take it back. Some guy made a digital converter, and he doesn't understand sequential, but you have color phase. Mm -hmm. So when you start out, you got to know what your real color is and phase and color. 
and they didn't seem to know that. So now they've converted all of this, the whole, everything we ever had from sequential. But it's also a greenish, tintish, oh. whatever. Well, he's the man to, to fix that. Thank you. <laughs> Boy, am I, I going to have a lot to live up to? <laughs> no, he's uh, uh, Cliff has well, been experimenting. No, I, no, I believe I, I just, he's he is he knows he knows this world very well. And, and I, I, for one, I, I I appreciate what I'm seeing. I all it, all that comes to mind when I, I think of this, the this really is is rather special. If, if you're able to do that, and that's what I've been trying to tell these people. Uh, down at the Johnson Space Center. They don't understand it. The guy who built the, 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 the digital converter doesn't understand it. And I keep oh. saying, you don't understand. And we had it. We had uh, 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 a two-way switch. Yeah. And all we did was delay a field. One yes. Or advance a field. Right. And so whatever it came up with, you flipped it one way, and you know immediately where you're. And yeah. He, these guys left it in whatever position it was in, and wherever it came up, that's what they used. <laughs> so instead of getting red, green, blue, you do something. Yeah. And so you never, and once you start, that's what you're going to end up it with. It needs a field ID pulse, just like for the red We, we had red it. Color. We had a pulse in it. Oh. Well, a, that makes it easy. You it, just yeah, key on that and Right before red was a pulse. Okay. And we used a, a little from a... a, a a, a recorder, a, 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 a sound audio recorder, a little, okay. a little okay. pickup. Okay. Just put a little pickup right yeah. in the wheel. Yeah. It's in there. Hmm. That's what that's doing. There's a tape head back yeah. behind there and yeah. three rotating magnets yeah. that, that offer the sync pickup for the yeah. wheel. But I, I couldn't, you know, you're talking to people that just don't understand the whole No, they've thing. never seen any. Yeah, you, these are young people. Right? I've been wanting to build this since I was 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me, get me your address somehow. I will do that. I will do that in a minute or two. Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. And thank I, I'd, you. I'd like to see what you can do. With it. I'll do anything I can for you. Yeah. No, I really would. Okay. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Let's, uh, quite, quite proud of that. Move out here, and I'll show you our broadcast. Oh, this is a here's a first rectangular color too. It's uh, it was not. Oh, I remember that one. That I remember good. taking one out of my set. I said, "What the hell am I going to do with this thing?" Make it real. Well, this is from the fit. This was actually from fifty. Yeah. Uh, from from fifty five. Yeah. So it was before this, you know, the the yeah. sixties generation. Of, so Westinghouse actually was manufactured. Oops, excuse me. Wow. Hi. Remember us from yeah. last night? Yes, sir. Hey, thanks for coming. I, this is Here my, we are. This is, my <laughs> this is my camera. Yeah. Why you got two cameras? I don't understand. Well, we're running cyan. We've got blue and green combined. Oh, it's that. And then the red, and there's the prism yeah. split up. Okay, yeah, yes. And this is the output. Uh, that's the picture. <laughs> Very simple. Yeah. And the preamps are here. We have a red preamp and then the cyan preamp. And the registration is back here. You just a little ring, you just turn and it brings the red camera in line with the the cyan camera. It weighed, it weighed 18 pounds, almost what your what your color camera weighed. Did it weigh about a pound more? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, uh, using a small uh, bit of cotton. Bit of cotton, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Of course, the color wheel, as we talked about last night, the color wheel won't work with a, a uh, Viticon camera because of the image retention yeah. in the Viticon. Yeah. That's amazing. When did you do this? This is 1975. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. And then the picture I showed you last night, my camera, Sandy, grab the kit. My camera was on, your camera was on the moon, but my camera was on every newsstand in 1969, July. 20th, this is what was on the newsstand. And, then the, and that's my black and white camera. Isn't that great? Yeah. And that weighed about seven pounds, just about what your black and white camera weighed on the moon. But people were building mine. I don't think yeah, yours would have uh, survived on it, the moon. My, mine wouldn't have made it to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> it barely made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
you'd have a hard time buying mine. It was a million dollars a piece. <laughs> Is that what the, we, last year, last night, it was a, the color camera was, how much was No, it? not the color. The, the black, black and white was a million dollars each. Yeah, well, the development of all of the integrated circuits, and they're somewhere around fifty to hundred thousand dollars each. You got twenty-eight of them alone. It's going to cost a lot of money. It sure is. The tube development was millions. Sure. So by the time we got through, we had about eight, eight or nine million dollars in the program. So we only built seven flight models. So if you want to average the seven flight models, it's a little about a million dollars. Right. Right. So, well, gee. Somebody said, well, you know, can't you make these things and sell them for hand cameras? I said, who's got the million dollar piece? That's a good point. <laughs> good point. <laughs> no, the million was wholesale, too. That wasn't retail. That's right. <laughs> well, what came out of it, though, uh, we had nothing to do with a small camera that came out. But what came out of it was we had the first to develop really the, the integrated circuitry, the complete integrated circuit panel. And that sort of gave the industry the, uh, the impetus to, uh, you know, to go forward. Right. And they, in time, they picked up a lot of those circuitry because that was public, available for public use because we didn't own it. The government you know, paid for it. So they were able to pick this up with no charge or anything. And uh, almost every company that started used some of that stuff. So it caused, uh, it, it in itself was not usable, but it, it sort of put it on the market for people. Right. And so it, it may have had the... And uh, color was so important, as we discussed last night, the color just added so much, well, and then getting the cost down for yeah. consumers, Oh yeah. that was the, that was the trick. Yeah. So it, it, that, was the, that was the advantage of it. Uh, out of it came uh, these small cameras, but not... Well, they're going to use... Um, we had a program, uh, the networks wanted us in 1972 to bring the color camera into the uh, national convention. And what they wanted to do is they had a guy uh, with a color camera, and we could make it smaller if we had to. Uh, so we could have a smaller camera. And they'd put it on this boom, mm -hmm. and there was a guy behind him who had batteries all over him. And they had a little transmitter to go up into the roof area where their office was. And so they felt they can get color this way. Otherwise, all they had were remotes were in black and white. And uh, we set up a separate group to go work for the I, I didn't want to do that. And uh, they finally decided, the uh, uh, company decided against it. that It wasn't a business. They, mm -hmm. This was not their business. And, <clears throat> They decided they, this commercial is not their area of expertise. Now, was that, a, was that a field sequential or was it uh, field, field sequential? And, uh, and all three networks were paying for this. And I have photographs of, of, uh, of uh, demonstrations for them and whatnot. And we were using full up uh, six megahertz at the time camera. To go to A, we had six megahertz, which certainly added to, to the thing. And the fact that nobody was moving very fast, you didn't have this, you, you're going to get some effect of moving, but, but the fact that the, no one was moving very fast, you got a pretty, pretty good image. So it was a good image. And uh, they were hoping uh, we would stay with it, but the corporation said, enough of this. this is, you know, we, we got into this thing through the back door and uh, the black and white, you threw us into color, and we never anticipated that. And now we're into something, and we don't know where it's going, and it ain't where we want to go. Right. And I didn't argue with them. Right. But that's fantastic. Can you show that? Pardon? Is that working? No, I wish it were today. I, it, 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 was, it, it only worked a... Uh, <laughs> on one, one on one modified RCA set, <laughs> and the re, well originally, and the the reason that it's so simple, I only use twelve transistors yeah, not much to because it. I used a black and white monitor to yeah. supply the sweep sure. in the sink yeah. to it. And I I have a uh, oh, thing you. for you to take a little schematic. Yeah, we do have I love schematic. that. Schematic That's print. fantastic. But it brought Great. color down to for the four hundred dollar range. 
and if you were a TV dealer or a TV repairman, you could arrange this, modify two television sets, and you could your customers could see themselves in color for the first time. Amazing. Wow. That's fantastic. You gotta be proud of this one. Well, thank you, sir. Coming from you, that's a compliment I'll remember the rest of my life. <laughs> ah, this is great. It's a sweetheart. I love yes. it. You did a beautiful job. Well, thank you, sir. How make this whole thing? Pardon? Like this is cast. Well, that's that's was made by art for by Arvin Radio was built in my hometown, and as a personal favor to me, Arvin built me the camera case. That's not cast, though. No, it's aluminum. Yeah. Well, there's a yeah, and there's a. Uh, it's welded down to it. Yeah. 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 Like their model shop yeah, built. Yeah. Their model shop built the uh, the aluminum case for me. <laughs> It is an unusual shape. Yes, well, it, it was shorter. You could just come up under it and, and, and walk around. Right. <laughs> you thought of everything, didn't you? Well, yeah, and Ralph will help me a little bit on this. It's a shape of Phillips, isn't it? <laughs> sure, man. I you. appreciate that. Thank you. That's, that's a sweetheart. That's, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. okay. You really do. It didn't take you very much to do it. No, it was, we had 12, we had, we got the list of 12 transistors in the whole system. Uh, in addition to the re two receivers, and there were four, can uh, four transistors in the cyan head, and four transistors in the red amplifier, then one transistor in the monitor for red, one transistor for cyan, two more transistors for sync, and, 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 the, and that was it. It was the, the whole thing. The, the prism, the prism came off of a uh, World War II tank. Okay. Tank periscope. Yeah, I remember, it, yeah, I remember that. And uh, uh, Edmund Scientific. Edmund, yeah. Yeah, they, they sold me the, the prisms to use. That's great. <laughs> Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure. I really enjoyed talking to you last night. Stan, here's our uh, our 1948 um, mobile production truck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look at that. <laughs> this was we got it. It, uh, it was put in. A, it was originally from Salt Lake City, and it um, it uh, was then bought by an educational station in Newark, Ohio, and they ran it until about I think the mid 70s, and then put it in a warehouse and we got it last year. It's got all the equipment in it, just like when they shut it down. There are two of the cameras. Um, we had a guy out here all day Friday trying to actually get it running. Right. And uh, in a day, he just couldn't get everything done. He got the, I guess he got the CCU and the monitors and the, what's that? What year is that? I don't know. What, when, when were those, I think they were, those cameras were introduced around in the late 40s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no Westinghouse tubes. <laughs> Westinghouse tubes? No. No, no. no. Pennsylvania. Oh. GE General Electric? Yeah. I tell you, you really got to give these people credit back then. Wow. For what they had. It was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah they, when you think of what they were working with, you can imagine what heat came out of this thing. Jeez. It's one of these things that didn't pop like this. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, I think they... There was there was always at least one engineer running around changing oh, tubes, yeah, and I, I, fiddling with things. And, and and it wasn't so unusual for this to be open either. Like yeah, that. Or, or missing. Yeah, or missing. Right. What I liked was this. <laughs> yeah, that was that was not original RCA. <laughs> WGSF. Yeah. You had three three levels. Yeah, yeah. Right. right in. Yeah. On your moon camera, why yeah. do you use interchangeable lenses rather than zoom lenses? Well, I, we only we did have interchangeable lenses on the black and white. Right, that's what I mean. Well, we found that, that uh, it, it wasn't easy for them to change lenses. Right. It became, if you're asking them to do something uh, in a and particularly on the moon, anyway. And then we found that uh, they really did want to use it in a more professional manner, <coughs> zooming in where they felt they wanted to without having to change things. 
It gave him the flexibility yeah. that he didn't have. So you did put a zoom on the black and white movie? No. No, no, no. Only on the color. <laughs> Only on the color. Okay. Well, when we went to color, we, we said, let's go all the way. And that's when we built the little small monitor that they could put. But why didn't they use zoom lenses? Because of the temperature change? Yeah, zoom why, 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 why. Mean originally? Yes, why not zoom? It was NASA's specification to us, but we just followed this. Yeah. And did they ever change a lens on that black and white moon cake? Yeah, it went from a lunar day to wide angle. So when he moved back, they moved the camera out. 75, 80 feet. Uh, he had, you can see him change the lens before he took it out of the, out of the Mesa. On the one takeoff where you see the limb go off, I don't know which Apollo flight that was, when they're leaving the moon, the limb takes off, the camera tilts up. Was that being remotely controlled from, yeah, from Earth station? Yeah. So they had to anticipate the liftoff, right? Because there was oh, a yeah. two second delay. Oh yeah, well the whole, that whole system, uh, was the, the guy who worked it, it was a, he, he had digital control over the, he had a pulse digital, so every time he pulsed it, it moved one way or the other. Okay. He was, didn't have continuous motion. That's why it goes boom. So he had been working with the delay, and so he had that factor into it. Yeah, because it, it's like a move until two seconds yeah, after you yeah, hit so it. Yeah, he had that factor, yeah. So he was able to get it in the right, but it took three, three missions to get it right, to follow it all the way up. The first one that just went out and went out of view. So how many cameras are left on the moon? Oh, I guess there are, oh, 14, about seven or eight. Seven uh, cameras there, yeah. garbage, huh? Yeah, at least, at least there. And the cameras and everything. Oh, everything, yeah. Well, they, not only that, when they went in back into the LEM, they, they went in and took off, they closed the door, pressurized the cabin, and then hooked up to uh, their own suit with a hose for pressure, and reopened the cabin, or re uh, depressurized, reopened it, and threw out all of their hazablots, their, their backpack, the push, the, they were just throwing, you could see stuff from flying down. Yeah, yeah, if you want to call it that, it's worth a fortune for anybody. Yeah, yeah. why were they doing that? Yeah, wait, wait. wait. They, 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 they were going to lift off, and they, were, they wanted minimum weight on that lift off. Did they remember to take all the film in? Yeah. <laughs> Are there any missing pictures? No, I think they took that. No, it, it was, it, those shots were, were classic. Was temperature your biggest factor in designing that black and white camera? Uh, uh, no, I think vacuum was. That, well, it's a combination of this temperature and vacuum together create a real problem. And uh, how do you get rid of it? And, uh, and uh, we did, um, we, we, we were allowed to go on the internet uh, to do our thermal analysis. I was, I, we were running a, running a program from MIT, and we had no clearance, so we, this was all military at the time. Uh, the internet was brand new then, right? Well, the internet was, no, it was what been used by the military. To, to the and this is what, you're 68, or? Well, yeah, 65, 64. Okay. So they, they, no, that was, well, if they were using it for uh, missile. Uh, and uh, we could get on the internet, and they'd get us on like 3.30 in the morning for a half an hour or so. And we'd run all our thermal test, thermal analysis through MIT and uh, to confirm whether we have it or we don't have it. And you had to factor in both the atmospheric conditions as well as the temperature conditions. So it, it was, that was the biggest factor. You don't operate in vacuum as you will. Where were you when the first Apollo 11 walk occurred? Oh, uh, we were across the hall from the theater, the Mission Control Theater. And we had a small little lab. We just had a scope and a couple of monitors. And a line in, a feed in from Mission Control. And a line back to the comm desk. So we could tell them what to do. What was your feeling when you saw those first pictures? 
uh, total relief. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. Uh, I knew the day we wo we won the contract that we were in for something that was going to be, you know, one day this was going to this was going to hit. But, but it was always out there somewhere, and you know, you, you just you knew it in the back of your head, but at the same token, you didn't have to face up to it. And as far as you know, you never were going to face up. To it. So it came at you suddenly like a railroad train, and uh, the reality set in. It was uh, difficult to wait it out. You know, you said uh, it was not critical, but in the end, it was probably the most important thing for well, the world to know that it really happened. Yeah, the, the thing was, they, they got wiped out on Apollo 14. Uh, on Apollo 14, they, they, they go into an Earth orbit, and then they, the uh, command module comes out of the Saturn V, turns around, it goes back in and docks with the LEM mm -hmm. inside and then pulls it out. Mm -hmm. And if they don't dock in Earth orbit, they can't go onto the moon because when they leave the moon, they got to go dock to get back to the, to the uh, command module. So he went in for a dock and he, he couldn't dock. And he tried it again and he couldn't get a hard dock. So the third time, and he knew this was third and last time, he put it in high gear and rammed it in, he just blew it in. And uh, they were shook on mission control, and they said, God, we don't know, he, he may have damaged the talking drove when he did that. So they called up and said, uh, you were going to hold in, in the earth orbit, and I want you to get the color camera up there. Put it on zoom, tie, get tight in on that drogue, and we want to see every inch of that drogue. And they, and when he got tight in, you could see the little line. It was so good, and they had little flashlights that they were just putting on. And uh, they watched, they looked at it for about 20 minutes uh, during a, uh, an Earth cover. And uh, when they got through, they finally said we didn't see anything, so you clear. Transmit over. Now, had they not, had you not had the camera, uh, they would have just aborted the mission. So that was their first time they said, "Well, I think maybe this camera is more than than non-critical. It's non-mission critical. It saved the damn mission for them." It happened any number of times, and when it got to Skylab, uh, the, the solar wing got stuck, and. They didn't know what to do, and they didn't want to lose the whole skyline. So they asked the command module to circle around and zoom in to what was locking and holding that wing. And the guy picked it up on camera. They recorded on Earth. And by the time these guys were in the command module, got back to Earth, they had simulated it with down in the tank, working on exactly how to get this thing undone. So they had time after time events that saved the mission. So it, 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 it just went, that whole thing was just ludicrous to begin with. It just said they didn't understand the, the, the value of, of television. It's like television in general for entertainment and yeah. it becomes the industrial becomes more important than oh, the yeah, they, they learned their lesson there. Of course when they got in the shuttle now they have cameras now, why they didn't have it. They were losing these panels for I don't know how many years, they Tiles. kept replacing them. So now they finally, after the thing blew apart, they got television cameras on the thing at liftoff, watching these things if they come off or not. I mean, on Apollo 12, yeah. how long did it take for you to recognize that they burned the camera out by swinging around to the sun? Because oh. Walter Cronkite took hours before he reported it. Well, the... Um, well, there's a couple of reasons for why he took so long. Yeah, but, I'd like to know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the uh, uh, when he he said Earth, he said there's Earth, and we knew that there was five degrees difference between Sun and Earth. And, uh, it was a, a, a mark that we got for ourselves to always know where Sun and Earth were. Mm -hmm. And five degrees, mm -hmm. we knew, if you're going to look at Earth, you're going to get Sun, and you're going to mm -hmm. blow it. So the second he said, 
hey, there's Earth, and it looked like he was swinging towards it. We all jumped up and yelled, and no, right away, right don't away. do that. And we were trying to get to the phone to tell him, don't do it, when it, it just seared. Remember, he they, somebody asked him to bang on the camera. No, and he, when he, he did that did, on his you own. You could see the color fringes yeah. because of the no, wall changing. No, he, he, he did that on his own. Oh, yeah, he did it, it on his own, okay. Yeah, but then it, you knew it, that everything it, was working. As I except. said, Alan Bean has taken a hell of a hit. And, I, and he's a wonderful guy. Yeah. And, uh, and he was the rookie on the thing. And he heard an awful lot of words, that, you know, and he was given the camera, and nobody talked to him. Nobody talked to him. And, and he heard these other guys saying, forget the camera, that's not the important thing. We're not here for that. It's non-critical, no. And then he, and then they gave him, instead of a camera, a box with a stick on it as a, simular, a simulation. He never even saw it, he never used one. Hmm. So here is a very bright guy who, who, if you listen to him now, uh, he'll say categorically, I made a horrible mistake. I shouldn't have listened. But he wasn't trained. He wasn't trained. He, he had a lot. So when he hit the, the thing, he thought the wheel had stuck. That was his thing. So when he hit it, uh, my feeling was it was just a human thing to do. That's what, what people do. <laughs> oh, no, but that just showed that everything was working except well, the pickup tube. Yeah, and, and out, you could see the, 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 when he hit it, whatever, it was only about 15% lost in the searing. We knew that. But when he hit it, this, this target just sort of folded oh, over. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't realize that. I didn't think that. Oh, that added to it. And that's, oh, I, I didn't It folded over, and, and you lost that. So this big chunk you saw out was as a result. He hit it, but at, before I that, it was that. just this little thing. And we knew at the time that uh, the ALC was just uh, responding to what, mm -hmm. they, what it saw as a high, very, very bright light. Steering. And so it just shut it down. I see. And if we could just disarm the ALC, they could have used it. But, you know, you go there and they, and they say, well, tell us what we can do. And I said, well, here's what you do. There's a little side panel over here. You've got to unscrew two screws. You go in there, there's five wires. There's no power on it. Click, cut any one of them. The ALC will come back and you'll have an image. Well, first of all, you, you only got three hours on the moon. The second mission, you're going to have a guy screwing around and taking a screwdriver on. And he's got a screwdriver and he's in these, these things with uh, the gloves with pressure. And hit that with a screwdriver and Lord knows what you're going to do. And then you're asking a guy to cut things. Well, number one, it doesn't have a screwdriver, it doesn't have a cutter. And there's no reason to even consider what you can do. But the truth matter was, had they been able to do it, they would have had an image of it, yeah. as we showed it to Thanks them. for clearing that up, because it's been all these years. We got years. a picture of the camera came back to us, and we yeah. went in, cut the wire, and there, there was, was the image. It was only 15% searing, you said. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was only. No. So it, it, it were, it, it, we knew the camera was still working. And that's how you knew it was 15%, because it came back. Yeah. And we have photographic proof of what but they just wouldn't believe it they felt you know you're blaming it on the astronaut and they, the reason it took so long mm -hmm. was that uh, they kept calling me to go on television to t explain what happened mm -hmm. and I said I would but they had released made they had they had made a public release to the network that the camera had failed and I said the camera hadn't failed he pointed it at the camera, at the sun. And so when you clarify that, I'll go. But until you clarify that, I'm not going on television. I'm not taking a hit for this thing. And I'm not going to hit this guy for what he did. It just was inadvertent, and that's the way it should be. So they argued back and forth, and finally, uh, the guy who was the, uh, McDevitt was uh, one of the astronauts who was the head of the mission, called me, and he said, you know, what can we do? I said, all I'm asking you is reissue your release and say it was inadvertent. He inadvertently pointed it at the sun. I said, every, every document you have said don't point it at the sun. And for, to turn around and say the camera failed is an implication I won't accept. So he said, you got it. I said, well, when you get it out, I'll go. It took and that's why. Hours. Yeah. 
I sat there while the phone rang, so I was going off the hook. Mm -hmm. Did you finally go on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I, and it was, you know, all I could say was, mm -hmm. the, the worst part of it was, I had prearranged a trip into Canada after that mission. And uh, I was supposed to be with Canadian Westinghouse. It asked me to come up. And I was supposed to be with the uh, te main television. And so after I went on television, I told them what happened, and everything sort of closed down at NASA. The, the uh, networks went off the air. People left the visiting room. So it, it, the mission sort of died in a way. And I took off for Canada to meet with them. And I was met with this entourage of press at the airport. And they hustled me into some big room for a press conference. And I, I don't know, figured, what, what in the hell is it? And they said, uh, we understand you're running from this thing. I said, I don't understand. What are you talking about? I said, I'm here to just uh, make a commitment, I promised. And the next day was this front page picture of me with the camera, you know, with my hand to my head like this. And it was awful. Uh, he, 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 he ran into Canada to get away from <laughs> So, uh, one of the side things that happened as a result. Uh, well, thank you for that. But that's Apollo 12. But Apollo 12, by the way, was a turning point in, uh, in, in television for NASA. Because up to then, they really didn't understand. When everything closed down, they said, oh my God, we don't have a mission. We got no coverage from networks, no, nothing from anybody, second time on the moon. And that's when they decided that maybe we ought to be in a more cooperative mode. And that's when probably we did uh, the most cooperatively that we ever did. And the whole, and everything changed at that point. They suddenly realized that, that television uh, played a heck of a more role than they thought it did. They did not understand that when they landed on the moon, the mission was the camera. Yeah. The camera was the eyes of what was going on. The news media was like a pool for them. And the news media took their news from what they saw on the camera. And that was the mission. They also understood that 100 years from now, the only thing they're going to see is the television. They understand that better today than they do did that, but they, they started to. So th everything changed after that. So to me, I said, uh, uh, Apollo 12 was a blessing in disguise. I, you know, I hated to see it happen, but, yeah, yeah. but when it did, I you know, took advantage of it. The other neat thing they did was go over to that lander and chop off some of it and bring it back. Oh, yeah. That, was, that, that on was 12, yeah. 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 And we were trying to, you know, the idea where we wanted to follow him all the way in. Yes, we had the zoom lens for that. that. And we couldn't see that. We couldn't see it was at a all. Disappointment, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that, that was, he was very close. He was mm -hmm. close enough that we could have tracked him on the zoom mm -hmm. lens. So, it's unfortunate. Thanks. Very good. Uh, Stan, thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Is it, it's also true, is it not, that had it not been for the television and, and there was a problem on the mission where he couldn't come back, that would have been the only recording we would have had. That's right. Well, see, the, 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 the question was a lot of times, why did they have uh, this, this uh, high, high, uh, high resolution, slow scan, 5 8 scan, 1280 line? And uh, that bounced around for an awful lot of, why was it there? Nobody seemed to want to use it. And uh, under, uh, be, behind it all, everybody came to the conclusion that if they didn't get back, that would have been the only image they had. And they didn't matter, nobody wanted to say it. And so that went on for a long time. That, uh, those, that what he was supposed to do when he got down there first was take a, a high high resolution image of the moon. That changed. And so at some point in time they decided, well maybe maybe this isn't that important. Maybe he will get back to her, maybe we don't need it. Whatever. I don't know. But uh, we have a feeling that was a we could never figure out why did you want this this high resolution still. 
So that was never used. No, and, and, and I have a thing that we did, we did have a program, and uh, what it was to, to make a, uh, a small color wheel on a black and white, and you, it was just a separate piece, self-contained, a little battery, uh, timing done by Bolivar, and you just slipped it on the front of the lens, and it clicked off uh, around and made three still photos, red, green, and blue. And that was supposed to be, uh, and that's what they wanted. And we had built that, and I guess about five months before they decided not to have it. And, I, and, I, and the word must have gotten out because I was hit by a, a number of people from the media is we understand you've got color photographs. And I said, no, I don't have any color photographs. So they had evidently heard about this thing. And uh, I don't have a, I, I never did save the thing. I got the drawing of it, but I don't have the unit itself. But it was a neat little thing. It was about this big around. It just clicked on and had a ring on it. All he had to do is pull a ring up and it just sequenced through the colors. And then they made photographs at the other end of, of the three images. Yeah. But that was what it was going to be used for eventually. But that was never used either. So we had two formats, one of which really was just a waste of a lot of effort. So. In, in the day you were doing the color uh, wheel scanner on the camera, what was at the image reconstruction in? Was it three separate CRTs being photographed to get the RGB, or how did they do no, the scan No, you mean the color camera? No, the, well, the color camera's conversion to get it back to where oh, it was Oh, no, that was, that was done all uh, electronically, with, with also with the storage, uh, magnetic storage device. I see. Were they using any digital technology? No, we didn't even have devices? digital technology. Because there was a story on the internet about somebody using digital TV during this shot to get Not the signal across. Not that we know Okay. I, I didn't think it was true either. No, I don't think so. So everything was no, all analog was all FM analog. and that sort of thing for the transmission? We were in an analog world. Yeah. We were trying to get in the digital world. We had made CCDs, and we had made it for satellites, and we made it for weather satellites. And so, uh, but... The idea of getting a CCD for color, uh, we tracked that. There were about four companies, and we were trying every which way to, to grab one, but the technology just wasn't there then. So we never did uh, So even all the image conversion to get from RGB back to view it on NTSC or whatever display was all analog all storage, analog. disk storage maybe, but yeah, analog. Yeah, disk storage. Yeah. Stuff. That's all it was. Mm -hmm. And tape recorders. Big, huge tape recorders with a loop in between. This longitudinal high speed. Probably. Yeah, and a loop was for the difference of frequencies of spacecraft went out. Oh, I see. Back. Hmm. So you can compensate for it. That was. A, hmm. Yeah, it was. A, it was. It was done. Uh, it was done by our research people, and they had they had put it all down on paper before I even got there. And uh, they understood what they were doing, and they, they did a magnificent job. And that system that they put together was used uh, all the way through Apollo uh, and Skylab. And then they changed after that. At Baltimore, was that where the engineering was? Uh, no, this is in Houston. Oh, I see. And NASA did it in I Houston. See. So everything went to Houston for color converting. Uh, no one, uh, the tracking stations didn't have, there was, all, there was one color converter and that was in Houston. And if that went down, we would have lost it all. It was way it So they cranked it up to make sure it was working before every, every before, a couple hours before everything, they crank it up and run something through it to make sure it was working. Did Westinghouse build that system as well? Yeah, they built it. Uh, our research people went out and they provided people out at Houston to, to, to work the problem. They guided them through it, tested it, uh, and then when they were finished, they left and NASA took over and they worked ever since. Where was the engineering for the electronics done? Was that done in the Baltimore area or in Houston? Yeah, we did it in Baltimore, right near BWI plant. Near BWI. Uh, it was a defense plant, actually. No.
Yeah. Yeah. Hey. BWI was Baltimore Westinghouse uh, uh, Industries or something. You said BWI. Yeah, well, BWI was the airport, right? Oh, the airport. Okay. Ba it used ba to be ba Baltimore, Washington. Okay. Yeah, all right. It used to be Friendship when we first Okay, I'm sorry. There. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was ba Baltimore Westinghouse. <laughs> we had our own. Uh, we uh, had our own uh, flight line to the thing. We we had our own planes. Uh, in fact, for uh, I used to go out almost every night for PR. I had to do PR for, for the company, and they would have a small jet to take me within the range of a jet that can do it in an evening or something like that. So we and we go right out on a flight line, and uh, the plane was sitting there for me. Like, you know, that's uh, it was uh, from the corporate standpoint. This was not very big money. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're mm -hmm. talking seven or eight million dollars. Yeah. I mean, they were, they had programs for hundreds and hundreds of million dollars. So they looked at it as purely as a public relations thing, and so they provided the jet and everything else to cover that. Why didn't RCA do the camera work? Why they didn't they? have the capability? Really? Yeah, that they, their capability wasn't that they didn't know television. They they were the masters at it. But that was a studio camera. You cannot. Mm -hmm. Different thing. Yeah, your, different tech, your whole approach is different. If you don't have the military background of building something for uncontrolled light, uncontrolled environment, small size light, low power, you're not going to get in it overnight. So they, they just didn't have the. Uh, they could build a little small Viticon camera. But when you start talking at a level of we were talking about, and they had no uh, integrated circuit capability at all. So uh, NASA did a big study on this before they came to us. And we had no idea that they had built a small camera for NASA. We were not, this was not our area of interest. And they came down to our vice president and asked Westinghouse if they would take it. That's when I first heard about it. He called me in and asked if I would uh, write a proposal. And I said, I can't. I'm going to. I had to be in South America on a. We had a, a tracking station program I was working on. And he said, Well, when are you leaving for South America? And I said, uh, I said, 10 days. He said, Well, you got a, a week to write the, pro the proposal. To go, you know, write the proposal. We spent a week writing the proposal, and while I was in South America, they called me in to, to negotiate the contract. And it happened so fast that they didn't know what happened. But the comp company never really, it wasn't a business they were going after. And after they got it, they weren't so damn sure they wanted it. And when they found out that it was going to be used on the moon, and the whole world was going to this. One of the interesting things about it, and that my son and I used to talk about it, is that all of the uh, uh, stuff that people were writing in, in fantasy about going on the moon and whatnot, and these guys that were writing all of this stuff was really good. Yes. Predicting what was good. Not one of them ever predicted the whole world would watch the first man walking on the moon. Not one. And the question is, how could these guys have missed this, this thing? Because they were predicting everything that was going to happen. Not one ever predicted that the world would stand by and watch this thing happen. Uh, Can I ask you, where's that black and white moon camera now? On the moon? Really? They didn't bring that back? Oh, no. Yeah. No, it's junk. It's called space junk. They didn't. Yeah, not again, even the first you got to understand, you got, got a guy on the moon, and I want every piece of weight the hell off that thing. To give me more assurance he's going to get back. So you throw the hell, throw everything you don't need on the moon. Now your camera was seven pounds. Yeah. Right? How about was there equipment on board that supported it, and how much transmitter? Did that weigh? How much did that weigh? Well, transmitter, I have no idea. The transmitter was used for communications as well. Okay. So.
So your signal was embedded with all the telemetry. Yeah. And, and so, you know, for three years we had people say, I got a tape here. I think I got the tape of the room law, the original 10 frame rate. And we say, you can't have a tape. It's, if you have telemetry tape, it's one thing. But to tell me you got tape, we didn't exist. So, uh, you know, we, we had thousands of, of recommendations where these slow scan tapes were, but we could discount probably 90% of them or more by the very fact that they say, well, I got a videotape. Uh, how do you, how did you record that? This is 10 frame rate. It took uh, a machine called an M22 to record that. It was recording at 120 inches a second. You got needed, it was 15 inch reels. You needed 15 reels for three hours. You know, it's not possible if somebody had a recording. So what we were looking for was very special stuff that uh, was only recorded in three tracking stations and, uh, and, and sent to Goddard where we don't know where it went. So it, it, was a, uh, it was an interesting journey to look for it, but in the end, uh, I suspect that it was de and reused. How many were on the team? On your a team? Well, we had uh, we had uh, two people in Australia. Uh, the one in uh, Sydney, and, that, and he's backing up the Honeysuckle Creek Bunch. And he's uh, he was actually 13 years old when he went on the moon. He's a minister of the Church of England in Sydney. He's uh, probably one of the best historians in this area, and uh, has probably the best knowledge. And he's a he's a scientist. I mean, he's got a degree. So we use him pretty hard. And we got another fellow by the name of John Sarkisian, is in Parks, and he's a uh, one of the people who looks through the telescope for astronomy and whatnot. And so he's been sort of covering Parks. And he was a kid at the time, but he's, he's there. And then we have a fellow in, uh, who worked at Goldstone that's living out in that area. And he was handling the actual television at the tracking station. He's like 78 or something. And then there's myself, and there's a gentleman by the name of Dick Naska, who, uh, when we went on the moon, he, w he was given an assignment to oversee the equipment for television and the tracking station. He was 27 years old, very young. And uh, he's still there. He's a dinosaur. And they use him, they drag him out every time they have something home. So I called him, and he said, I'll get a team together. So we have a team, we have a team in NASA that were doing it off the record. And then all of a sudden it got out that these tapes were lost and the, it just went through the media all over the world. And the administrator kept getting these messages and it was overwhelming. And he said, what the hell is going on here? And they told him about this group of volunteers who were doing this with, with Dick Nasca. And he said, we've got to get this under control. So he got a, uh, he appointed a assistant director to head it up and make it a formal program. So Dick then reported up to the administrator's office. And we've been working from the, from the administrator's office now for two and a half years. And we still are. And now we're working with the White House as well on this whole restoration. So we're hoping that for the 40th, we come up with something. Uh, whether we can do it or not, we don't know. We're working with this guy in Hollywood called uh, John Lowry, who does probably the, the most successful um, restoration of this kind of stuff. So he's working his heart out. We're her working our heart out. And now he's just sitting there dying to <laughs> With some. So whether we'll be successful or not, we don't know. If we are, then they're going to feature it as a centerpiece in the 40th. Did you know? see the DVD the fellow was promoting yesterday? I forget his name. The man who made the... Uh, no. He gave you a copy that one yesterday. Oh, you mean uh, Mark Ray? Mark, yeah. Yeah. Have you seen his program? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, why do you think he can't get that booked anywhere to show on the July of the well, show? They're, they're all playing games right now. What, which network and who's going to do what? Mm -hmm. And so forth. And they're waiting for NASA to make their move. And they've got their people working uh, in England, the United States, and elsewhere. It's a, it's a big effort going on. He's just one of many. So there's no question that uh, Mark's stuff is uh, unusually good. We've tried to, to get NASA to, to I said, and we told them right along that if we get, if what we do is successful, uh, his is a wonderful event. Uh, but uh, they're not, they're not looking right now. They're looking elsewhere. And I don't know. He's trying to sell. He, he thinks he may have the public television, but he's not sure. Did you see the feature film, The Dish? Yeah. You didn't like that at all? No, it was all hokey, so. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was entertaining, if you're looking for it. And uh, it's a national thing for them, every every anniversary. Oh, really? Oh, Even now? Yeah, four it's years a later. big thing. I, I was, I've been invited down there now for, I don't know how long, finally I accepted a couple of years ago. And uh, to accommodate me, moved it from July to March because it's winter down there. I, I really had no desire to know winter. So they moved it to so March. So they moved it for you. <laughs> and then they set up these things all over with uh, their public officials and God knows who else. Uh, the prime government. I, it's just unbelievable. And they had two weeks of. I went from one place to another, so it, it, and, and to, to them, uh, I'm the source of what they were handling, so mm -hmm. it, it was, they had a very strong tie mm -hmm. to me, and so when I came down there, it was all it was just wide open, and uh, they provided uh, cars and transportation and plane ride to, to wherever it was, it was done first class. But that's that, that they're putting on a show uh, for the 40th. It's just unbelievable. And I had promised them I'd be back, but, but with what's going on here, with what we're doing on, and with the administration and, and the White House, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do so. So I have to support what's here. But they're getting support from uh, skies and minister and a historian is very friendly with Neil Armstrong, one of the few people Neil even communicates. And uh, he's sending all kinds of messages for the 40th. Uh, most of the astronauts did because when they were, when they were around the Earth hole, that's the people they talked to when they got down to the forms. So they were always very, very pleased with the astronauts. And it was a wonderful relationship between the United States and Australia. But the dish was a good movie. It was a fun movie. And some of it's true, by the way. They did have a storm. I mean, that was all about it. And uh, it was a bitter storm. They didn't know whether the damn thing would come on, were we able to handle it or not. They didn't know if it was damaged. And, uh, they did lose lock on with the spacecraft. Did you know all that in real time, or did yeah. you, you did? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were on the horn the whole okay. time. We were just listening in the traffic. So, yeah, that was... That was but they, they uh, but Parks, in the end, came on and saved the day. They didn't record the first step on the Honeysuckle Creek, we you know that. We always knew that. They wouldn't admit it. <laughs> and finally, they did. But in any event, the uh, parks was a 200-foot antenna, and they probably had the best imagery of anybody. Goldstone was pitiful. Uh, Honeysuckle Creek only had 85 foot, so it was degrading. So parks was, was really the, the big one. And we've been friendly now for. 40 years now. Uh, it's been a long association. It's been a special one, really. Yeah. I mean, you just normally you just don't have a, 
an association where we worked together for 40 years. I thought, that, as I said, uh, the guy was only 13 years old when I started. With he, but he is renowned as a, uh, as a Apollo historian. Of every, he knows every link that was made in the transmission. He knows everybody was involved in it. it sounds like you have a pretty good recall of it all. Yeah. Buddha. It sounds like you have a pretty good recall of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think uh, you're right. And, and, and I understand that too. But I, it, it was a, an earmark thing in, in your life. Oh, yeah. You, you just gonna remember. When we were, last night we were at the table before you came and, and we were, all of us could remember exactly where we were mm -hmm. to watch that camera. Yeah, if you room. ask people, uh, do you remember the way you watch it? Oh, yeah. Do you remember uh, what the television said looked like? Yeah, I remember what it looked like. It was exactly. a 19, whatever. And exactly. It the, and it had this. And, well, do you remember who the people were on your left? Yeah, I remember. So the memory of this. The, the only thing we were confused on, what time in the United States did we watch those live pictures from the moon the first time? The walk. The walk. What was, was it in the evening of the 21st? Yeah, I was in Houston, so the 20th? we were, I don't remember in Houston myself, but I think it was around 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, and that was on the 20th? 20th. On the 20th itself. 20th, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. I remember that uh, I had watched, I had gone into the theater, at, the visitors theater at, uh, at JSC and they were gonna, sh were gonna show the touchdown, they were gonna put, uh, feed into us so we, uh, newspaper media could watch. And there were thousands of uh, media people. There. And so we sat, I sat with a couple of editors one was that week, and another was the New York Times, and uh, a couple of other people sitting there. And uh, we decided after it landed uh, that we better go eat something because it's going to be a long night. So we went down to the uh, cafeteria, and they had opened the gates for people to come in uh, in a the particular public, area. Yeah. Yeah. And so these guys were having this big discussion. I was just sitting there. I was having this big discussion that says, you know, we're writing all this stuff that's technical stuff and how are they going to get there? And he says, I'm not sure anybody even understands it. And the other one person there, and I forget where he was from, what newspaper. But he said, no, no, you're wrong. They, they really do understand. The other said, no, they don't. They we, may understand they're going to the moon, but anything beyond that, I don't think we're getting through. Well, we played it as a reader, and you guys, I'm sure, in the same area. We were playing on every single word and trying to determine exactly what they were meant and what they were doing, and every right. little nuance we were trying to and pick so, up. <laughs> so they, we, we went out after we went out of the cafeteria, and it, 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 it was raining like hell in Houston. And they have an overhead cover cover on the porch of the, the cafeteria. Anyway, two elderly women standing on the edge of the thing, looking out at the weather. And typical Houston weather, big downpour for uh, 40, 20 minutes. And then, anyway, while we were standing waiting, this one <laughs> elderly woman looked out and she said, looked out in the rain. She said, do you think they're going to go out tonight? And the other woman said, no, not in this rain. <laughs> <laughs> and these guys looked at each other like, so much for how much they know. <laughs> so it was very questionable how much people really knew about yeah, mid-course corrections and everything yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they really know. I'm sorry I have friends that say it never happened. What do you say to that? Oh, well, they, they, they're, you know. I'm, I'm ashamed of my friends. That's yeah, like, I'm sure, never sure you do. You've heard of that before? Yeah, we did everything in the back room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what. Well, they've been bugging me for years. It's been 40 years with these guys. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, thank you, Cliff. Okay. I'll be back to you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, the, uh, the problem with, th th these people are, don't believe what they're saying. Uh, well, I don't know. The, the people who are, there are people making money out of this. 
mm. and they're dragging other people in, and you get some innocent people who will believe that there's a, you know, there's a conspiracy everywhere. Yeah, around the it's a communist plot. And a communist plot, and so they'll believe anything. But what I dislike, and I can pick them out on the emails. I know who and how. I mean, when I read one of mine, I know exactly what this guy is. So I ignore him. I don't even respond. That's the point. And uh, I, I just won't do it. But what bothers me is I've written an awful lot of articles in the magazine, and they will take those articles and put them on the internet, rewrite them, and change enough words to look like I'm agreeing with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that really bugs me. Right. And my only thing is, uh, I have to, I have to stop from uh, from responding. But my attitude is, you don't respond. To right. Have you considered writing your memoirs about that program? Uh, no, no. I, well, my son, uh, my son is a, 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 a managing editor of a, a major newspaper, and he had talked about it. He was young and. He watched and lived through this thing. And he had some interesting concepts about it. There's a guy in Germany, who's originally from Australia, that is writing this thing, not, not an autobiography, but he's writing uh, okay. <laughs> what, what Mark Ray is doing. What time is it? It's yeah, we better go. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. It's wonderful to meet you. Yeah. Thank you.